Well, hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Strike Finder 2. It's a lightning trigger. And my name is Larry Pollock. I'm here, a professional photographer in Phoenix, Arizona. And of course, it's monsoon season, so we get a lot of this around here. This was actually taken a couple of years ago uh, without a Strike Finder. I actually had a Strike Finder on the camera, but I, this was a manual trigger of it. But I had the Strike Finder hooked up as a backup just in case I was between opening the shutters. And we'll talk about those in just a moment. Here's a, another shot from there in Sedona. Back there, I call this Thor returns to Sedona. As you can see, a swirling cloud and that intense lightning coming out in the Sedona sign and a car driving through. Uh, these are long exposures uh, up there, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, depending on well, how I was set up and I didn't look those up beforehand here. So here's one more from that evening going through Sedona. So anyways, I have in my hand here the Strike Finder 2. This is a nice little unit. Here's the Strike Finder Elite from previous. You can see the two of them together, quite a bit different. Now this does have sound and motion and things with it as well, and that's what I mainly use it for because this unit from the previous owners was not as accurate and as uh, reliable to me. So I quit using it except as a backup, as I said, I put it on the camera and if I missed, you know, open the shutter uh, and I had just finished one or something and it could open it faster than I could, I'd get shots that I might miss otherwise. But now with this guy, I'm not missing hardly anything except those very quick strikes that hit too quick for almost any trigger to get. But if they pulse, scatter across the sky, I've got them almost every time with this. Now we have some new owners, Jane Morris Whedon and Joe Whedon. They were kind enough to send this unit out to me and gave me an opportunity to test it because I had been a previous uh, user of it and I'd sent them some interesting photos from all kinds of things I'd done with it. So this is an amazing little beast here. That's what I'm going to say about it. Um, it's smaller, lighter, it's dedicated, it's this no longer gets in the way of my eye on top of the camera. I really like it. So what I did is I took a little bit of time to run out and test and I was going to do it the same way I've always done it. Manually open things and have this as a backup. But I decided I would totally trust this. I was going to give it 100% a chance to work. So I had a storm come in right after I received it. I was sleeping. I jumped in the car, ran out down the freeway and pulled off into a parking lot and I got this shot as soon as I put it on and right after that I got this shot. Now not anything whoop de doo big great foregrounds and all that but it gave me a chance to start to see how this unit would work. So over the preceding couple of months I drove all over the place as I had time. Didn't get on anything really epic where I had great foreground in the right timing, right place like some shots I still want to get with it. But I did get out there and do these kinds of things. This is an example of when you want to have a strike finder or a similar product. Now I want this one because of its size and its accuracy. They rewrote the software and they change the size of the circuit board and the whole unit and it just is nice. All you do is connect it up with the cable that goes to your camera. So you got to order the cable that fits your camera and you turn it on and plug it in. It's plug and play and it works. And this is the time of day when you really need it. This is near sunset. The storm is pushing through. You can see it's really windy. I'm holding onto the tripod because it's shaking. And this bolt came charging down out of the sky and I, I got the shot. Because normally you could only have your shutter open maybe a hundredth of a second, maybe fiftieth if you're lucky with all the light around and you'd be sitting there opening the shutter you know, hundreds and hundreds of times hoping it was open when a strike happened. You're wearing out your shutter, you're running a lot of actuations, you're filling up your card, which isn't a huge deal but these days, but with a strike finder I didn't have to do that. I could now just let it do its job, the Strike Finder 2, and get the shot. So uh, quickly here, I'll run through some images about the uh, last few months. Um, I had chased to the south toward Coolidge and got hit in a hay boob, a big dust storm in the dark. I could hardly see 50 yards or less. I had turned around and headed north toward Fort McDowell got set up with the lightning coming all of a sudden it was right on top of me and I had to pack it and get out for safety reasons. So I drove back to Tempe and it 
moved in there. And you see, even with these little things running way up in the sky up there, it still took the shot with a nice foreground in it, fun foreground anyways, for what I could do that if evening after being chased all over the place for several hours trying to get on a good location. The storm was coming in from just about everywhere and closing off just about all the options unless you wanted to sit in a downpour or under lightning. So I drove to Payson, ended up getting a lot of great shots up there. Uh, very quickly got a lot, a lot of shots and about 15 of them were really cool and I won't show them all, but I was found on this muddy road. There was lightning everywhere. I do turn them black and white, so we'll switch through these. The next storm that woke me up in the late night was out toward Gila Bend. I had uh, looked, I'd woke up to some stuff locally and looked out and I saw on the radar there was something big happening out there. And I drove out through Maricopa and headed out that direction. I chased this one down in the night. I had no idea the poles were there until I pulled off and I shot and there it was. And the strike finder again behaved perfectly going through all these shots and getting the cars and the you know, camera, you know, opening it. I think I was probably 20 second exposures, maybe 10 on these and black and white again. So then here's a shot I got up at back to Payson. I didn't show this earlier because this was a, a unique one. I rarely get them where I can see the strike like that searing into the side of the hill and boom, it happened. No fire, there's rock up there, a lot of rain, nothing burned, but uh, it definitely uh, uh, the strike finder was working extremely well. So again, how do I use these triggers? Um, before, I used to have to put them on as backup because I didn't totally trust them and at night I would go ahead and open the shutter and I would go ahead and let it uh, uh, hopefully have the, as a backup. Now, I totally trust the strike finder. I have done nothing all summer but let it do its job for me and I stand back and get to enjoy the storm and just watch my settings if it's getting bright. I've been able to get stuff in the daytime, at sunset, at night, it doesn't matter. This thing, the sensitivity is just about perfect. Um, it will go off in some cloud lightning. That they'll all do that. Every trigger will end up doing that. So my conclusions on this is this thing's darn near perfect. I mean, as perfect as you're going to get. It gets the shot except those super fast ones, but no, no trigger is going to get those except on a rare, rare occasion. And the other thing I want to say about this is people, you know, this is only 129 bucks on their website. It's all brand new, different from any of the other units that they still have some of the other units there. And people will say, well, can I get one that runs by my iPhone and it's the same price and it has all these other things it'll do as well. I say, sure, you can. But here's my issue with that is I have to keep my phone charged, number one, and it's going down fast because it's, you know, uh, it just does out there if you've got anything else going on. Plus, I've found on some of the things I've done in the past that if I got a call or I opened a different app, it cut off what was going on like a time lapse with that other unit that I was using. It's, I'm not talking about anything uh, current here. It's something I had in the past. I haven't tested everything out there. I can't tell you what would happen. But I don't want to be running my battery. I want something that's going to be up there that's dedicated like this. It's going to do its job all the time and I can have my phone over here I can take this phone and I can go to radar scope and check my radar see what's coming in behind me what's developing what's going on that's important to me I can communicate with other uh, storm chasers if I want texting and calling and I'm not sitting here worrying about my battery and carrying other things this thing fits in my bag it does one thing well it dedicated and you know if your phone runs out of battery your other ones not gonna work I will get one of the other ones for the studio for the things I do on there with shooting things, breaking things, splashing things. That's very good for the, a lot of things I want to do there. But for lightning, this is going in my bag. Thank you, Strike Finder. You guys did a great job on your update, tweaking things to make it just that little bit faster than it needed to be. And it now gets the job done.